Hey, it's Mike here, and today, how a parasite that is associated with cats, Toxoplasmosis gondii, is something that's capable of changing our behavior in sort of wild ways. These ways include what is known as the fatal attraction phenomenon, which, yes, is as dramatic as it sounds, and then we also have a massively overlooked aspect of diet. The mainstream appears to not mention this at all when talking about it. We're just talking about cat scratches and cat poop, but no. Diet is the main way that people get this. We're also gonna cover how it can, in more rare cases, be sexually transmitted later on. Now let's look at the science because researching this, the science just kept surprising me, catting me off guard. <laughs> I'm gonna make a stupid pun, but let's just go. So what is Toxoplasmosis gondii, and is there any relation to Gandhi? Oh yes, apparently they are both highly sexual. They both have sexual aspects. We don't need to get into Gandhi's. There's no relation in terms of the name, obviously, but we're talking about a protozoan parasite, these microscopic, almost little animals who are in the protozoa category. And it looks a bit like an evil avocado, at least from this chart. And we hear that most people who get it have no symptoms and they have a healthy immune system, but there are likely these subtle behavioral changes that happen. However, if somebody is immunocompromised, you can have more physical symptoms such as you know, damage to the eyes, lungs, brain, and other organs. And here's the wild thing, up to 3 billion people globally are infected and that depends on the population. It's between 15 and 50% generally. In the US, it's down at around 15% due to hygiene practices, but then can be closer to 50% in other cultures. And it's often claimed that it can't be cured, but there's a little bit more to the story because while well, our body can take it from an active to a dormant scenario, it's still technically in there if it's dormant, but that can be cysts that are sort of encapsulated sometimes in the muscles or in the brain, like RFK Jr.'s pork tape larva cyst in his brain, but a little bit different. But using the correct terminology, the official statement would be that it can't be eradicated in its latent or dormant stage. But now let's get to the interesting part, which is how all of this works, how it can change behavior. And that brings us to a bit of a cat and mouse game. And by a bit, I mean, yes, cats and mice, because evolutionarily, this is a parasite that wants to spread itself and it wants to spread itself from cat to cat, from mouse to mouse, everywhere it can. And one great way of doing that is evolving the ability to change mice or other rodent behavior so that they'd be more likely to be caught by cats, which is wild. Yes, infected rodents can actually lose their fear of cats and become somewhat attracted to them, hence the fatal attraction which can then apply to humans, not quite as literally, but we still have a leftover neurotransmitter brain effect from that. And that is why ladies dress up like cats for Halloween to look sexy. What's actually happening? Well, the parasite has evolved to increase the dopamine levels within rodents to then also decrease their fear levels. So they're more likely to just run out into the open and get eaten by cats. And this helps the cat survive, helps it poop out more parasite and helps spread the parasite in general. The term spread and poop were used too many times within that sentence. And the behavioral severity in rodents at least appears to be directly correlated to how severe their infection is. The more brain cysts they have, the sort of wackier they get. And this is where we get to diet because the main pathway once again is not cat poop or cat scratches as people believe, but it is actually diet globally. So foodborne transmission in particular from raw or undercooked meat, whether we're talking about cow or lamb or venison, and even in seafood like oysters and other shellfish. So again, the main <laughs> risk of this is actually by not eating vegan food, which I think is interesting. Well, we can also get it from contaminated soil and hence unwashed produce. According to this study on pregnant women, the lion's share is from raw or undercooked meat exposure. And of course that contamination would be from animal feces. And now we can get to that human behavior because we have a situation where perhaps evolved with rodents, but we're also mammals. We really like to think that as humans, we're completely in control of our thoughts and our emotions, which I, I think we've also learned that we're not. But in this scenario, we have a little parasite that might be changing our behavior. And I say might because some of our studies have different levels of evidence with different levels of convincing arguments. And even these latent or dormant cases in people have been shown to alter behavior. 
As given a sort of modified traffic light response test, their brain had a slightly more dramatic reaction. And one of the ways that scientists think it might affect our behavior is by increasing risk taking, just like those mice running out into the open in front of those cats. Humans might metaphorically run out into the open and say, start more businesses? <laughs> yes, the study found that university students and business professionals that were toxoplasmosis gondii positive were 1.4 to 1.8 times more likely to major in business and start their own businesses compared to uninfected peers. Or maybe business bros just like to grill more, handle more raw meat, and then get infected more. I don't know. But that adds up with the risk taking. And this risk taking might be leading to an increased level of traffic accidents as well. Well, they at least found that the odds of traffic accidents in infected people was two times uninfected people. That's from a meta-analysis. We do have some evidence that people who are infected have a decreased reaction time, which they propose as an alternative exercise explanation. However, we don't really know. And then we have the sexual aspect that I mentioned earlier, which just gets kind of interesting. And firstly, we can just go to this sort of weird study, which had people smell infected cat pee. We love that for them. They found that men who were infected found the pee that was infected more attractive, which is like, why was a scientist like, let's measure how attractive cat pee smells. That's weird right there. Or was that researcher a cat? We will never know. The effect did not work on women. And that brings me to how there's a bit of a sex disparity, a gender disparity here. And that has to do with sexual traits that increase or decrease for people that are infected. However, both of them tend to have a weird increase in like sadomasochism sexuality. For example, infected women were more aroused by violent things and men were more aroused by bondage and masochism as well as violence. And we also see an association between sexual promiscuity or more partners and people that are infected. This could have to do with that dopamine reward chasing aspect or because that's an effect that we see that's stronger in men, we also see that testosterone levels are increased in infected men. Now people, instead of juicing, they're just gonna be infecting themselves with this. I should not have said that. Anyway, women's testosterone levels are lower when they're infected, so that's another disparity. Or it could just be an association with sexual activity, the study says, since it is sexually transmitted. The final route I should mention, and yes, it can make its way into men's semen, although this is a lot less common than diet. And then of course, because we're talking about neurotransmitters, we have some interesting signals for mental illness, such as infected people having nearly twice the risk of schizophrenia. And interestingly, people who own cats also have twice the risk. Again, just because food is the main way that people get infected doesn't mean that cats is not a major path. Anyway, this topic was a little bit out there, but I was like, I'm gonna go there anyway. This has to do with eating animals. It has to do with diseases health in general, public health messaging, okay? I have a master of public health for those that forgot. Anyway, <laughs> let me know down below what you think about all this. Are there any studies or effects on people that I missed here? Because it's super interesting and I really just wanna learn more about this. That's why I researched it. And as usual, feel free to like and subscribe. I still think like 90% of people that watch my videos regularly aren't subscribed. So, you know, you could help my ego out a little bit by doing that if you want. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.